Hi, welcome back. Okay, so, hi Coco. Coco just thought I was doing my makeup, so she didn't expect me to talk. Hi. Hey, Roo. She's down here. Hi, what are you doing? Okay, anyways, what's up? Oh, I don't want the ceiling fan in. Okay, what's up, y'all? Okay, so today I have woken up and chosen violence. Mm. Not really. I, <laughs> I mean, kind of, a little bit. I, um, I'm gonna do a bold lip look and with a neutral eye, but I'm gonna do kind of a fun, um, I don't even know how to call it. I saw Kim Kardashian wearing this look and I'm pretty sure Mario did it um, based on his Instagram. I'm gonna try to do it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I also, <laughs> yesterday, I had like 30 minutes to kill for between like errands and things. Um, I had a 1.30 appointment at something. So I went to Ulta and I got lipsticks. <laughs> so today I'm gonna use this one. It's the Tarte. Two or no, it's Too Faced, not Tarte. Too Faced, Melted Matte, and this is in color Nasty Girl. I'm not a fan of the name, but the red is really good. Um, and then also, I because I was some, I was very emo in junior high and high school, but I did not present outwardly as emo. You know. Like, my family is very conservative Christian, so I would have probably been exercised, even though they're Baptist and don't believe in exorcisms. Ex yeah, anyways. Um, but I also got, when I was there, Kat Von D black lipstick. I will do a look with this. Um, I gotta figure out what I wanna do, but I am so excited. I always wanted black lipstick. I always did. And now I'm in my thirties with my own money. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to get it. Um, and I also tried out the Morphe just to try it because while these are like 22, um, this was 10 and I love the Morphe eyeshadows. So I also got this. So I'll do a look with this. I actually put this on yesterday and then I was so excited, I put it on. It looked really good. I thought it was a matte, apparently it's a gloss. I misread the sign, that's my fault. Um, and the box, I was just like, ooh, orange red, perfect. Um, and then I forgot I had to put a mask on as well. So I put the mask on and then it was a lot of transfer. So this is definitely a, um, once we don't have to wear masks, lipstick. But I love the mattes and I'm actually running out a lot of my mattes and they're kind of getting old. Um, because they don't transfer on the mask as much. So I got that. Got some new lash primer because I don't like the milk one that I got. So I got the one I know I like. And then I got something else new. I got, um, instead of reordering the Thrive, I wanted to try something new. So I got the Anastasia version. It's in a pencil, but we'll see how it goes. This one, literally, y'all, it's that's as far as it goes out. That's how much I have left. I used all of it. Like, I loved it so much. Um, okay, and then in my boxy charm. So I'm gonna use like a combo of the stuff I got yesterday and then my boxy charm. If you don't know what boxy charm is, go look it up. I really like, I've recommended it to people. And um, we all used to do glossy box, but glossy box, sometimes you get full lipsticks and mascaras, but most of the time glossy box, it's like, 22 23 dollars i think it was and then you only got like the sample sizes so you have all these samples and it's just like okay well what if i really like it and then it's like they would send you samples of something that was like 200 dollars, and then you fall in love with it and then it's just not to glossy box was awesome however boxy charm is my favorite um because it's, 20, I think it's $25 a month, so $27 with tax and shipping and all that. Oh, sorry, Coco. Um, and you get full size, and you get five full size a month. So, what came? I got this banana um, moisturizer. So, I'm excited for that. I already opened and tested it um, on my skin just because I have sensitive skin and sometimes they break out. So, I already did a tester, which I always recommend take if it's a new product take it put it on your wrist i do that at ulta or sephora well when you could 
I would like literally walk around for an hour if I was like looking at stuff and I would have it on my room. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, just making sure it doesn't break me out. I might buy it. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so this is, look how cute it is. So I'm almost out of my um, Neutrogena moisturizer, so I'll be using this until it runs out just because I have it. Um, and my dermatologist always recommends changing out products quite frequently. Um, so just because your skin gets used to it and just because you've never broken out with it before doesn't mean you won't, which has happened to me. I'm like, I don't get it. I use this all the time. And she's like, mm, your skin decided it didn't like you today. I was like, oh. I'm shooting this in the morning, so this is definitely just coffee. Um, I also got this rose water setting spray, which of course I'm going to love because my last name is Rose. So we're going to try that out. Um, and then we also have this apple and balm. Oh yeah, this one was Maven, which I've heard is good. Um, this apple and balm glow lip mask by... Surfini? Surf, Surfina? I can't. I'm so bad at pronouncing names. Um, botanicals. So this, the packaging, I also tried this one out already. Um, just to make sure. But it's a lip mask. It says to put it on at night. So I'm going to try that to put this in my routine because anyone knows me, I have a bit of anxiety and I constantly pick my lips, which means they're constantly dry. Yeah. Um, and then new eyeshadow primer by Vizart. So we'll see, because I'm a stan of Urban Decay. Stan. So we'll see how this, we'll see. Um, and then, uh, new eyeshadow palette. So this is Lime Crime Venus 3. Got the Venus famous painting Botticelli, I think. Um, I took art history in, in high school and then it only counted for art appreciation and I needed, I had one semester where I legit, like, I was just, they kind of screwed me over my schedule. So I had a fall where it was like, I could either take no classes, but I would lose my on-campus job, which I really liked. So I had to take six hours to keep my on-campus job and like, the way the apartments and stuff worked out, it was easier just to stay up there than it was to come home, you know, the three hours to Houston and then try to move back. And so my parents were like, yeah, you can stay. Just like, you know, make sure you work your full 20 hours though, since you're only taking six hours of classes. It was the best semester. It was the best. I took graphic design one. So I learned Photoshop and then I took art history again and it was so fun. <laughs> and they were both like, uh, 8 a.m. classes. No, they weren't. One was an 8 a.m. class and then one was like a noon class. So I literally had class Monday, Wednesday. And then I worked like Tuesday, Thursday and I, oh, it was the best. It was the best schedule. And now as someone who works a full-time job and is doing a bunch of YouTube videos and trying to do a side business. I miss it. Anyways, but look how pretty. So I'm going to use this today. Look how pretty it is. It's so pretty. So it has um, some fun pops, but it also has some really good neutrals. So I'm excited to try this. So we're going to use all these new products. That way I'm not just like using the same products every time. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get started. Um, but yeah, we're also, while I'm doing this, going to talk about just some fun feminist things because I woke up and just mm, was still so annoyed at something I saw online. Um, and they say what's really funny is I don't put a lot of stock into astrology, but I am a Scorpio and the older I get, the more, and I hear like descriptors, I'm just like, mm they're not wrong. Like they're, they're not wrong. So I'm just like, eh, maybe there is something to it, but okay. First I've already washed with my proactive, did that whole thing. So first step, always eyes. 
But yeah, it came out this, I'm trying to get my camera angles better as well. So I'm gonna really try to not do this. Really gonna try. Um, but yeah, I, the older I get, the more I really am just like, you know, I'm a Scorpio, I don't really care. It's, that's what it is. But yeah, I saw on social media and TikTok a lot of people sharing that pastor who said that women need to look like women for their husbands so that they will like them more and not be tempted to cheat. I believe was the premise. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. However, I refuse to watch the full video because it, I mean, just the clip made my blood boil. And then this man throws up Melania Trump, which was surprising to me. It, not surprising because it's like, it was a, I believe a Baptist church. So it's not surprising that they wouldn't throw up Melania given conservative Christian Republican for you know, in the Trump thing. I'm not really, don't at me, but like, I don't like him either and I go to church. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I was surprised, but I probably shouldn't have been surprised because I was surprised because the photo he chose, she's burying her shoulders, which in a conservative Christian church, you don't do. So I was, First off, I'm like, why are you throwing at her? She's a former supermodel, supposedly. I, I don't know any campaign she was in, but whatever. Um, uh, hydrate and prep. So I did my melasma cream. Now we're prepping. Gotta get it moisturized. Um, and then I have a little bit, these are scars, which is why I put my melasma cream on it because it's a color corrector. So this is sun damage. This is a scar that turned into sun damage. Scar, scar, actual acne. Um, but yeah, so she's wearing a halter. It was a pretty dress, I mean, but she's wearing a halter, but her shoulders, were, and I was like, I was a little taken aback by that. And then he's talking about like, you know, not everyone can be a trophy wife. Like, or every woman should try, strive to be a trophy wife. But, um, you know, and then he makes a joke of like, not everyone can look like her. And I was like, dude, first off, uh, he was not attractive to be attractive enough to even come close to saying that. He should have never said those things. A man should never say these things that he said in the little clip I saw anyways. But he, I'll say he was not attractive enough. I, the outfit, the spiky hair, the like glasses that every boy in junior high when I was in seventh grade wore. Like, no, what? Who are you to comment? He went past, he, he wasn't even like physically fit or anything. He went past dad bod and was just like chunky. Go up. Be like, oh, women need to look like trophy wives for their husbands. I, I just, I, I cannot, I cannot with these men who think like that. And it's one reason I don't really go to church anymore. I don't. Um, if you knew me in junior high, I was like junior high, high school, went to church all the time. This and that. And I, I don't go anywhere because it's like nothing. It never felt right. Like a lot of the things. They would say I was like that's not uh, it like never I was never like fully indoctrinated into the thinking and so I never I would be in Sunday school at first I stopped going to Sunday school in college because I was like they would say stuff and I'm like that's not really that's, no that's not right what what where, where are you getting that that's not even what the Bible says but um okay so I'm trying this out Ooh, it's a gel okay I don't know really how much to use. It doesn't have an applicator. It's just like a, like a squeezer. So we'll try it. Um, but I stopped going because I, you know, I went to college in East Texas. So it was a lot more conservative than even here in Houston, the conservative churches were. So I was just like, they would say stuff and I'm like, that is inappropriate. Like, oh my God, 
no. Um, so I stopped going fairly early on to Sunday school, but then even as an adult, I was just stopped going because it's, it's not that I like lo lost my faith or anything. It's, you know, I still believe in Jesus and that, but it's just, I don't, there's a lot of interpretations that are not correct. And if you watch a lot of people on TikTok, you know, they're like, what did I find out in seminary school that really like shattered my worldview? And it's, I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot. It varies between the translations of the Bible, what the meaning of words were, like there's a lot. So I just stopped going. I stopped going because I was like, it was after a breakup, my self-esteem was not that great, you know, girls. And so I was, going to therapy but then I was going to church as well and then it just finally like there was this one and it was a pastor I liked and stuff but it was like you know the whole thing especially in a Baptist is you're not worthy and like everything you know and it's just like this whole idea that you yourself are not worthy and you need to be saved by another entity Sorry, Coco, I made loud noises. I made loud noises. And so it was just like, you know, and you grow up hearing that your entire life. And it's just like, I, no, I can save, I don't need a man to come rescue and save me. It's like another one of those reiterations of, you know, if you just follow this, life will be great. And it's like, that's not how it works, A and B, like, but anyways, that's kind of one of the reasons I stopped going to church. But why I never really dated in the church. I never, I never dated a guy from church. I never did because I was like, I will eat him up and spit him out because, okay, so put it on, I let it dry. It seems like it's drying. Um, and now I'm doing my typical, putting a good base down. So we're gonna put this base down. I think I, my camera angles are better. Yeah, yeah. this works um I never dated in the church because of men like this where it's like the women need to act a certain way and I'm the leader and you know what I say goes and I'm like mm, no because I have I spent a lot of time with my grandma she's still alive um she reads a chapter of the bible every night and she was very adamant she would always tell me she'd be like okay you read the Bible for yourself. You don't rely on your husband to read it for you. You read it yourself. You have your own copy. You go to women's studies if you want to. Um, but you read it yourself and you come to your own conclusions and you follow what's in your heart about what it means. She's like, because in reality, it's a bunch of men back in the day who chose what books went into the Bible and it's a bunch of men standing up now and interpreting it. So she's like, I'm not saying it's wrong, but she's like, don't just follow blindly. So I've had that like instilled since I was like, could read, you know, and she would take me to church. So that's kind of how I always approach it. And she always has, one reason I kind of never dated in the church is because a lot of misinterpretation, in my opinion, and I'm not a theologist, is that, and I judge pastors by how they preach this one thing. The women submit, wives submit to your husbands and blah, 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 blah. Because that, there's a second part to that verse. I've read the whole Bible, not all together, but like within my lifetime, I've read the whole Bible and I've probably read the New Testament five or six different times, um, all together. But the whole verse is quite often not preached because the whole verse or the whole passage the, oh, the other thing she said, she goes, always read the chapter before, the chapter, and the chapter after, because a sermon is a three to five verse snippet of an entire book, and if you do that, you can take it and manipulate it any way you want to. We see it in everyday law, the media, t text messages. If I took one text message from some random dude and took it to the cops, like... No, you would have to look through the whole chain and like read everything, you know? And that's why 
um, you know, sometimes it would get really hard because I would sit there and be like, that's not what you're leaving out stuff. I'm like, you, you, literally the passage before contradicts everything you're saying. So it got really hard for me to like, even at like churches I like to even, cause I'm like, what are you doing? Like, that's not even what it says. That's, I mean, anyways. Um, but yeah, so I, okay, so I'm going to use this and this is going to be my base color. This is, or the darkest. So it's ecstasy. Yeah, ecstasy. <laughs> So, but basically, like, I judge churches and pastors, especially, especially like male pastors, based on if they say the second verse, because the second word, verse says, you know, conversely, husbands submit to your wife. So the whole passage overall, is what my grandma always told me, is it's supposed to be a 50-50 partnership. It's supposed to be two people coming together, mutual respect, respecting, you know, in this marriage or relationship, but it's always twisted and turned to, well, I submit to your husband, do whatever he says. He's the leader of the house. And it's like, okay, like, yeah, and don't at me, but like the spirit of it, when you read it in the second passage, it gives all these commandments to women, right? The second half of it, it gives all these like commandments and things to men and they never talk about it at least to the churches I go to they never hardly talk about it and like maybe once or twice I've heard them you know even bring that verse up but it's just a good example of taking these snippets and twisting it around to how to your own personal views and when in reality that's not at all how I think it would have was meant you know but whatever I'm not a preacher I'm a designer. Anyways. Um, okay. So the look I want to do is kind of a soft wing. So I'm going to put this dark in and kind of do a wingish look. So we'll see how it goes. Mm. Um, let me kind of adjust this a little bit. So that way I can still see in the camera. I'm trying, y'all. I'm really trying um, to get it like better angles. I don't, I need to like look up how other people do their setups. Cause I just, I don't know. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, yeah, that works. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going in and kind of rubbing this into the lash line uh, and that'll give a good base. And then honestly, you don't have to use like that much eyeliner, right? Wait, no, let's go this way. Okay. Okay. So, and then I'm going to just try to start building up this wing look. And then I'm going to go in with my angle brush and kind of sharpen it up. So I don't really do a lot of eyeshadow on my unders just because, like under eye, because I am in my 30s and I do have the start of some wrinkles. So if I ever decide to get Botox, if I could ever afford Botox, let's go there. <laughs> I might have to like take the camera and be like, hey, this is what it is and it's terrible, um, I'm sure. But yeah, we're just going to do a soft kind of base and then we're gonna I'm gonna go back and kind of have to redo it because I'm gonna put you know the other stuff in I just wanted to get a good base and shape for it that way when I go in with the final I have a good kind of outline to go by so I also my eyes are quite round so I always end up having this divot so I'm gonna try to do it to where I don't have that I start um but yeah so this dude I mean this and I heard he got fired because it was I mean it definitely crossed the line but I just 
could not believe what he was saying. I was like, D first off, it, you're disrespecting the women of your congregation, first off. So to sit there, that came up somehow. Like, it, it did. It was like, maybe someone in marriage counseling was like, oh, I just, she doesn't put forth effort anymore. Okay, if you feel like your wife isn't putting forth effort, ask yourself, what do I deserve her? Do, am I doing that would, how to say it? Am I doing everything as a man in a marriage, doing everything, am I putting enough effort that she would put enough effort? Forth, right? Am I giving her enough so that she feels great and pretty and wants to do that? Also, there's no wrong way to be a woman. If you want to sit, if you don't want to wear makeup and you want to have your hair in a bun and you don't care about working out, there's no way, wrong way to be a woman. Just let, let the women be. But if, you know, as a husband, if you're like, well, you know, before the kids, she did, she would dress up and she would do this and she would do that and she would do this. Well, sir, she's not doing that anymore because she's probably like really exhausted. So what can you be doing to make her life easier so that maybe she wants to do that again? I always hate it. I hate it. You see these dudes, they're like, oh, I still work out. Like, five days a week, but yeah, she's getting a little chunky. And it's like, um, okay, well, why aren't, why don't you take the kids so she can maybe go work out if she wants to? Why don't you take the kids and don't call it babysitting. It's not babysitting if it's your own child. Like I, ugh, it's my other pet peeve. This is a lot more red undertone than I thought. It looks very brown when it's it's very mahogany colored. But yeah, I'm like, it's not babysitting if it's your own kid. If I look over after my friend's kid, that's babysitting. That ain't my kid. If they have a little bit too much sugar, I don't know. But yeah, it's like, oh, she used to always have her nails done and now she doesn't. Well, okay, what... When does she have time to go to the nail salon? Are you watching? Are you taking care of the kids so she can take that two hours to go to the salon? No. Hi, Coca Bear. I'm on rant today. I love it. Um. Okay. So I got the outline basis. This is Coco of the wings done. So I'm gonna go back and kind of fill in here. And I want this to be more neutral because I want this to kind of stand out. Okay. So these are the shades that we have, so pretty. So I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of the Beloved, which is this one, and the Rapture, which is this one. Oh my gosh, some of these names are like so appropriate for my rant today. Ow, Coco, your little claws. But yeah, it just, it got to me because I was like, this is why I left because and don't go because I can't you can't win for losing as a woman especially in the church it, in general you can't it's you're too you're a slut you're too conservative you're a prude you're this you're that but to have someone use scripture and twist it to basically say whatever he wants about any woman so this one he's like you need to in this instance he's like oh you need to look pretty you need would it be a trophy for your husband? He's probably the same dude that's out there slut shame using scripture to slut shame other women of his congregation. And it dry and I've seen it and it drives me nuts. I'm like, oh, they're like, make sure, you know, submit to the husband and make sure you're having, you know, you're doing your wifely duties, aka, you know, banging him whenever he wants. But also, don't be too provocative at church. Don't dress a certain way, but make sure you look sexy for him. But blah blah. Don't even get me into the purity culture is actually grooming because I will lose my mind. But I mean, it's you can't win for losing and taking snippets out of a, an entire book and applying it willy nilly, however you want, to justify some weird idea you have is 
not what it's supposed to be. So, I'm glad that that church did fire him or put him on leave or something because going around and shaming women in your congregation is not okay. And it's, and also I wonder where the, because the idea came from somewhere. So I wonder where it came from. Did it come from like he was in marriage counseling with someone? He's like, oh, I'm just not attracted to her anymore because she's not taking care of herself but I'm not really giving her the tools and resources and everything she needs that she could be able to take care of herself. Men, um, in general. Or, is he one of those creepy guys that's like, oh, I don't have a hot thing to look at when I'm up here anymore and y'all need to step it up. Are you, sir, this is my question, are you, sir, going around and hitting on, glaring at, the women in your congregation because that also is not okay I don't even know how pigment is. oh it's not really that okay this will work it's not really I don't want it to be like too dark so that's not what we're going for Ooh, that's pretty it's pretty um but yeah so that's where I'm kind of like I got so mad because and I think it's definitely projecting like years of going to church and then hearing, you know, you would hear a couple be upset of like, they turned our private marriage counseling because we're having issues into a whole sermon because everybody needed to hear it. And while most of the time the churches don't reveal who, where they got it and like, everybody knows, everybody knows, everybody gossips, everybody knows. Like, everybody knows. And they're like, oh, the Bobby and Sue, Jean, Sue Ann or whatever their names are, are in the council and that must be their problems. And it just perpetuates more gossip. And it's not okay. I'm just like, I've seen it time and time again. Or they try to, my favorite, it's not my favorite, it's disgusting, is... I don't even know if I should say it. If you're at church and they try to tell you, do a whole sermon about homosexuality as a sin, which it's not. It's not what the Bible says. It's not. The Bible preaches against what pedophilia. That's what it means. So people going around saying, oh, no, come. But you can't preach against pedophilia because then you wouldn't have the Catholic Church and you wouldn't be able to groom all your lovely little youth group girls into marrying all these church leaders. Yeah, I went to church camp. No one ever did anything to me at church camp. Um, I went to church camp, but one of the counselors was married to one of the, the youth ministers. Uh, what was it? 16 year age difference. So he was 25 when he started. No, no, that's not right. 11 year age difference. Ooh, 16 years is my aunt and uncle. She was at least in her 20s, but when they met, 24, he was 40, still gross. They're, they're happy. I, I shouldn't talk about it. It's still, I still don't like it. Anyways. Um, no, he was 25. She was 14. That's what it was. So I meet this girl. She's married at 23 to him and been mar happily married for two, three years. Let's do the math. Even if they got together, started dating, which in the church, a lot of times it's like you date, it goes quick, right? You start dating, you're engaged after six months, the wedding is six months later. Like that's kind of the conservative church timeline. So she was 23, they've been married for two or three years. They started dating when she was like 19, 20. She's still ostensibly in the youth group. That's what I mean when I say purity culture is 
grooming because this is the same woman who, when the girls had to break out, was like, I'm so glad I waited and saved myself for my husband. Yeah, who is telling you to stay, save yourself? Your husband. That's why it's illegal in Texas even for teachers to date their students even if they are of consensual age. I know a dude that is technically a sex offender because he did this. He was 24, she was 18, yes, but she was still his student. And guess what, he got arrested for it. There's a mugshot, like he got convicted. Like he is a, still, play, still plays drums for the church on Sundays. Because it was a misunderstanding. I, I am on a rant today. Ah. And I love it. Anyways. But yeah, so this dude, I just, uh, and it brought, I'm awesome. It just brought back a lot of why I left the church. Because you can never win. Depending on what passage is chosen and used, it just, it'll send you into a different space. And it's just like, or different, you know, the passage she was using was one that I even, I don't, I don't even think he was using, I don't even know where he was getting this stuff from because I was like, I've read the Bible and I don't even, okay. Um, but yeah, I put rapture up here, but I'm also going to go back with my new highlighter, um, from Anastasia, Anastasia. Anastasia was a bomb movie. Oh my gosh, I loved it. I actually watched it the other day. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna drink wine and watch Anastasia. <laughs> Ooh, I like this, okay. So it's creamy, but it goes on really nice. And I think that's what the look kind of needs up here. So I'm gonna put this up here in my brow. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely need to blend it out, but it looks really pretty. So we're going to do this. Um, but yeah, it's like this whole pressure thing of like, depending on the scripture, it's like, this is what it takes to be a good wife. And this is how women should be in the Bible. But then the, it's the next scripture is like, you know, make sure you're doing your wifely duties. And like, basically it's like, be a whore for your husband, but you know, everywhere else and it's it's so convoluted it's so confusing you can't win for trying and it's just you know I've seen women where it's like you, they'll get another they'll preach something right preach something and it's like oh I need to improve in this area six months later preach something and then no one realizes that it's contradicting what they said six months prior and it's like, oh, I really feel in my heart I need to change. And you're keeping women, and I'm talking from the point of view of a woman, um, in this constant, like, oh, I'm not good enough. And what? And it's, it's too much. And that's why I left. I can't, you know, especially when I am single. And they're like, oh, come, you can meet. We have plenty of eligible bodies. And, like, that's how they would sell Sunday school to me. And I was like, I will rip the Sunday school apart with like one sentence. Like I remember <laughs> there was a one time I was like, <laughs> I can't even remember what it was, but I was just like, yeah, I don't think that's at all accurate. So, but this is my interpretation of it. And the look on some of these dudes faces was like, like, I don't have a problem anymore being like, no, that's not what we're doing. That's not what it says. And Okay, so I'm going back. I did the face, and like I said, I'm doing a really neutral eye, but I kind of want to do more of a wing look. So I'm going back in with my angle brush and this. Um, ecstasy. And I'm just going to kind of redo this wing because it kind of faded out. And I tried really hard to stay and not go beyond here so I don't have to do that cleanup thing because I want it to look soft and diffused. I don't want it to look um, kind of a harsh line, you know? I just want it to look soft and pretty. 
which actually I might need to get pull another palette and do kind of a darker but we'll see because I kind of wanted it to look I didn't realize it looks like it's brown but it's really like a deep purple so we'll do I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll pull a brown and we'll kind of But yeah, the other issue is like, don't be concerned with image. You know, that's conceited, but everybody is. And how the outward appearance of things and like, this is how it look, how would it look if you did this? But it's very, it's that same idea of like, you can never win. Not even win, it's like, it, it just, it's like, don't be conceited. Don't care what the outside world thinks. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do, but then it's like, oh, well, you know, make sure you're giving off a great image and a good, a good image for God. Honestly, I'll say it. Um, so I'm using this one. I've used this in another video as well. It's the um, Style London Velvet Touch. So this doesn't have the colors listed, but it's this dark color right here. It's a good dark color. But yeah, I'm just going in and kind of building more of this wing. Oh yeah, there we go. And I didn't wet my angle brush. I am just kind of putting it in. Oh yeah, okay, so here we go. And then we're gonna kind of buff it out just a little bit. This is nothing like the Kim Kardashian look, but it's It'll look good, it'll, it'll be pretty. Okay, but yeah, I... It's like the idea that you have to like worry about how your actions and behaviors are perceived, which is how it should be. Like you can't go around like being an asshole and like cussing at everybody and like this and that. You know, but at the same time, it's like, oh, don't worry about this and that and this and that, and you're doing the right thing. And then it's like, but at the same time, it's like, let's judge and pick everybody apart and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, when I started, I would go and I sang in the choir um, and I would come and then I would sit in the back and listen to the sermon the amount of people who either A, just didn't talk to me at all, which is kind of fine because, like, I didn't really want to talk to anyone before noon on a Sunday either. But the it was either that or they'd be like, oh, so nice to meet you. And I have been, like, going there for five years, and I sing in the choir. So I would be up on stage singing, and then they would see me in the back, and they're like, oh, nice to meet you. So it would be like didn't even, and I'd be like, I've been going here for five years. I would just straight up call people out. Or I would have older men come up and be like, oh yeah, oh, single by yourself, oh yeah, come to the, we got plenty of eligible bachelors here. I'm not here at a church to find a man. The last place I wanna find one. Okay, so I'm going in with, um, I'm not gonna do all the way out, but I am gonna just kind of put some more dark at my lash line, that way my lashes um, man, I'm really rambling today. I might not even post this. We'll see. But yeah, I was, oh yeah, my point. Um, it's almost like after I stopped going, it was almost like being deprogrammed from a cold. Oh yeah, see how it just makes it pop? Like almost, like it was just these things about like your self-worth and how it's obtained and um, like just various ideas about different things that you know is wrong. And then it's like, I never fully drank like all the Kool-Aid and subscribed to I always was like, that doesn't make sense. I don't really know about that. Um, so now I'm just going back with a dark color and kind of smudging it. That way it's not like a harsh line, the eyeliner.
Okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, okay. Eyes are done. We're going to put some sunblock on. Everybody, put, use sunblock. Everybody, man, woman, put on your kids. Put some sunblock on. Put it on your puppy's nose. They have puppy sunblock. Put on Coco's nose. Yes, I do. Um... Get it in there. I put it on my chest. I put it everywhere. As Grandma Rose says, tits to forehead. Skincare. Skincare goes tits to forehead. You ever see a woman and it's like this and then it's just like, and then it's like, oh, yeah. You want this to match. And then rub it on your hands. That way it all just kind of matches. But yeah, my nice rant. My rant for the, oh, he made me so mad. He made me so mad when I heard that. And how disrespectful, I talked about him disre, how disrespectful it was to the women in his congregation. How disrespectful, I'm assuming he's married, to his wife. I, I hope he's not married. I hope he's not married, which I always, I found it weird. And my mom was kind of the same way at this one church we did went to because the pastor wasn't married, but he would try to give marriage advice. <laughs> and my mom would just be like, that's not, no. <laughs> She'd be like, no, not listening to him. He... But yeah, I'm like, how disrespectful to your wife. I hope you don't have a daughter. I don't even know who this man is. Hope he doesn't have a daughter. I, can you imagine a dad who would get up and say those things? Oh. Okay, so I did my primer. I did sunblock and then I did my primer. I'm using the All Nighter um, by Urban Decay. So I'm gonna let that become tacky for a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna use my typical concealer foundation. <sighs> like I said, I woke up and chose by angry violence this morning with my words. Oh, it's a little cold now. Oh, it's tacky, okay. Let's get it. I'm doing, um, it has the hydrating stick in the middle, so I'm just gonna get in there and cover my uh, dark circles because it's allergy season in Texas. Which is really stressful when the pandemic is still going on because like, I woke up one morning, my throat was so sore. My throat was so sore, which happens every year. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I woke up, my throat was so sore because I had fallen asleep on my back, apparently didn't move the entire time. And I was, <laughs> and I was like stuffed up. So I was breathing through my mouth all night on my back. So I'm like, <gasps> like sleeping like this. So then I'm um, amazed. I was like, oh my God, what if it's COVID? And I was like, it's not COVID. You're just, it's allergy season, you're stopped up. I mean, I, I took my temperature throughout the day and stayed home, did work from home instead of going into the office. So I took precautions just in case, but yeah, same thing happened last year, except we didn't, um, COVID was new. And so I started getting a sinus infection um, around, it was probably two days before my office officially decided to shut down, but we had all kind of set up our work. I've been told to make sure we were set up for work from home in case. And so I emailed out and I was like, hey, it's probably a sinus infection and I'm gonna try to get a doctor's appointment. Um, but these are my symptoms, I'll keep y'all updated. Because it's March and I'm allergic to everything. I got a new beauty blender, so I'll probably have to do a couple layers of the foundation just because the beauty blender is new and it's soaks everything up even though it got it pretty wet 
but we'll see see how it's like not the best coverage yet um so we'll have to do like two rounds of of the foundation um which oh my gosh thank you to the girl at all time almost out of this and I legit was like I had gone in two weekends in a row they still didn't have it on the display I was like hey she was walking by I was like hey do you have this like I've been looking for it and she goes I might have one in the back wait here and it probably took her a good 10 minutes I was like looking at some of the other displays around that area because I don't like to I I've never worked at like I've done food service and stuff I've never worked retail but I could just imagine how annoying it is when a customer asks for something and then just wanders off and expects you to find them in the store. I'm always like, like I stay pretty much where they, they can come back to the same spot if they're going and getting something. Um, or sometimes I'll just awkwardly follow them. <laughs> but yeah, she came out, she goes, this is our last one. I was like, oh, thank you so much. She goes, sorry about the wait. And I was like, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> Because I hate, I've talked about it before a lot and I'm sure it's annoying, but I have talked about when Urban Decay stopped, they came out with Stay Naked and stopped selling just regular naked on, oh no, ah, I had something on my nose and they stopped selling, um, okay, see that's better. I always hate the new sponges because they just absorb everything. The first couple days and I'm doing since I'm doing a bold red lip I'm putting oh, sorry Coco some of the foundation now I look crazy but it works get in the eye area um ooh, I messed this up so bad oh gosh oh man mm. Yeah, I, dang it, I messed it up. Um, okay, uh, getting in there with a the finger. Why is this gloopy? It's never done that. Um, okay. Now I have to go back and fix the swing because <laughs> I kind of got a little aggressive and messed it up a little bit. But yeah, so I look really super pasty right now. Um, but we'll go in and fix it. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. So I'm just going to go in. You can see I kind of got the foundation as I was tapping it out because it kind of got gloopy here, so I was trying to like tap it out, but then I got a little, a little too much there. So we're gonna go, ooh, make it even on both sides. Um, okay, so then we're just gonna, so it's a little harsh now, but I'm gonna go in and diffuse it and hope it doesn't fall out on my foundation too bad. So how I diffused it um, is I kind of went this way and now I'm going this way. That way it's not like too harsh. Oh. This is just like a soft wing look, really. I need to go, I should have, oh my God, I messed this up so. I messed it up. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. We messed it up. Okay. Well, we might as well just go in and do a big smoky eye. Right? I should have looked at that Kim Kardashian photo a little bit better. They're not even even anymore. Okay, screw it. That's how you fix it. Okay, so I'm taking the maroon 
mahogany, whatever you want to call it. That is mahogany. I love that line. Okay, so we're just going to kind of put it in and then we're going to diffuse it. Kind of, so you'll still have a shadow, but it won't be as like crazy. Oh, I have... I messed it up so bad. Oh, man. Okay. Well. Mm. Okay. Is that even? No. What is, oh, dang it. Okay. What am I, how am I going to fix this? Let's see. It's on a rant. Still doing a red lip, even though I'm doing crazy eyes, apparently now. Okay, so we're gonna, I need to get this, this is too much, and there's no way I'm gonna cover it with that, I'm not packing in that much foundation on my, okay, got it, okay. So I had to add more to this eye so it matched this eye. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna kind of blend it out. made it worse. Oh no. Oh no, Coco. Coco doesn't care. Coco's asleep. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to go back with um, the beloved color, that kind of darker brown, and just kind of put it more here. That way it blends out. Okay, okay. Okay, I think I can fix that. Let's just, yes, okay. We're gonna just have a day where you're like, this is not, this is, this is after. It's so pink. I didn't expect it to be this pink. I have tried to export my last makeup video. That is so pink. It's not that pink. It legit, like, it's this. And then it, I don't even know. Oh my gosh. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna go back in with this guy. Try to tone down this pinkness, but okay. And I can fix this and I can fix that. Anyways, I've tried to export my video where I did my mint green eyes. If you're following my Instagram, you know what I'm talking about because it's the only Twitter as well. Because that's the only place I can post it because it doesn't. I'm praying. I did like a whole bunch of like disc cleanup and like all this stuff to try and get it to my computer to go, but it won't export it, and I don't know why. Like. Well, I know why. I have, okay, this is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. This is not my intent, but this was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but I am gonna have to kind of do a cleanup, which I was trying really hard not to do. And I know those strips are supposed to help, but I do it this way and it works. Ow. Ow, your little claws hurt so bad. I put a blanket for you and everything. Okay, why isn't this working? I'm trying to. I went on a rant about the church and now I'm.
Okay, so basically I put um, makeup remover, Q-tip, and I'm just gonna kind of clean this up. And then I'll go back in and try and, yeah, okay. So basically I'll have to go back in with some concealer and kind of clean that up as well. Um, but yeah, so it's not what I intended to do. <laughs> But we're going with it. Okay, get some. Oh, I'm on. I poured so much of it on myself. <sighs> okay. And then same thing here. So cleaned it up here, cleaned it up here. And then we're just going to go in with concealer and the foundation and really clean it up, you know? So. Not to worry, everything, it's just makeup, it wipes off, right? So, and if a man ever tells you, well, I'm so man-hating today, I love it. If a man ever, I'm gonna let that dry because I don't wanna put concealer on top of makeup remover. Seems counterintuitive. Um, which let me see, this isn't quite even. So let me get this one, okay. Sure, why not? I can fix the rest of that. Okay. If a man. It's always like, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. When they're like, you wear too much makeup. Mine, like, makeup wipes off, dude. Makeup wipes off. Like, I. I don't get it. Like, it's like, I don't like it when you wear this. I don't like it when you do this. I don't like it. And it's always so such that it's like, I don't like it when you wear heels. I don't like it when you wear that much makeup. First off, I didn't ask. Second off, the, all the things that are like sh easily, not permanent, easily changeable. You can wipe makeup off at the end of the day. You can change shoes. Like your shoe, I always hate it. I'm like, I don't, I didn't ask. Like, I don't, I'm not coming to you for fashion advice, dude. Like, I had an ex tell me, he's like, he goes, why are, why do you seem so tall? Same shoes I wore on our first date, mind you. And he's like, I don't like those. You're like taller than me. And I was like, okay, well, I don't like your Under Armour golf polos and weird CrossFit t-shirts that were from a competition five years ago. Like, he would wear like CrossFit t-shirts on dates, like nice dates. He would just wear like free, some of them had holes in it. And I was like, I have literally told him one time, I was like, do not comment on my appearance again. If you're, if you're going to wear that, don't comment on my appearance. Like I was like, I cannot, the audacity. Some minister is going to be like, that's why you're single. I, can we normalize people being okay? I like being single. Oh, this dried out. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my finger and kind of do this. And I'm gonna take a break while I re-wet this because it dried out. You wanna come up? You wanna come up? Okay, okay. See a cocoa. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, she liked off some of my foundation. Because I haven't done a same spray yet. Or the kisses. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Thank you. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. This is Coco. Coco has her own Instagram. Yes. Her own Instagram and her own TikTok. Mm -hmm. She's at Coco Tiny Teddy Bear. That is, there's a lot of water in this, so I just. Anyways, okay, so let's try this again. So, okay, you can kind of see the issue. I 
don't have a lot of coverage here. Oh, Coco. Okay. Someone's trying to get situated real quick. They woke her up. When I... So I don't have a lot of coverage here, but then it's also uneven here, a little splotchy. So I'm gonna try to fix this. Um, some days are better than others. Girls, like some guys, girls, guys, these, whoever you are. We all know some days go better with makeup than others. I'm trying to get better with the, um, um, like pronouns and things like that and the gender norm. I know not all, not all girls wear makeup and you know, guys like to wear makeup too. And it's, I think it's awesome. It's more, um, socially accepted now. I think makeup is for everybody. So I'm definitely trying to get better about, you know, in being more inclusive when I speak. So. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and it's a new makeup sponge. That's why I hate new makeup sponges. If anyone has a tip, because if you don't have the product directly on it, if it's a new sponge, it like soaks, it takes the product off your face. It's, I always hate a new sponge. Um, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's getting there. But as you can imagine, um, you know, I'm in my thirties and Gen Z I think is doing great work. I think there's definitely a little more grace that needs to be had for people that are trying and you know, we're not all perfect. Um, and kind of understanding where people are coming from. So as I'm ranting about the church, y'all can imagine I was raised very conservative with conservative values. So, you know, being more inclusive of when I talk about makeup, you know, I grew up in an environment where it was not okay for men to wear makeup. So when I speak, I, I think it is. I think every, if you wanna wear makeup, wear makeup. Why, why do I care? I don't care. If you wanna wear it, wear it. Um, but you know, sometimes it's just the way you're raised and how you speak. It's it, sometimes I forget and I'm like, oh, girls in makeup. And it's like, well, not, not all, um, girls like makeup and not, you know, and a lot of men do and, you know, and then now with the non-binary becoming more on the forefront of our knowledge, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. If I feel, I'm sorry, but I am trying. Um, okay, so she, I look like a crazy person right now. So we're gonna add more color into my face because we took out all the color when we did um, the foundation. I have a red undertone, so I like a, this is kind of a medium coverage. I just like to knock down the redness and then I'm gonna go put redness back in with my blush. It seems counterintuitive, but you know. Okay, so. This is a cream blush. I've used it in several videos, or it's a jelly. This is the Captive Captive Color Cosmetics. It's their jelly highlighter in color rose. So it doubles as a, it's supposed to double as a highlighter and a blush. And then it gets, it works really well though with creamy, with cream foundations, it works really, really well. So we're gonna get in there, just kind of put it on. Um, I always like to, I do the apples of my cheeks. I have like a big, I do the apples of my cheeks. I know some people try to do it. This is where I do it. Do it wherever you feel comfortable. Whatever you, however you think you look best, that's apply it there, you know? Like if you like your blush here, do it here. If you like it here, like I do, do it there. Um, okay, so then contour. And I'm gonna go back with a beauty blender. So if y'all are like, you're doing, not doing it right. I'm gonna go back with a beauty blender. Okay, so I'm doing it on the edge of my cheekbone and I'm going up. Always go up. And then here, here and then the C, right? Okay, so this is my quick 
lazy girl con I call it lazy girl contour because I I don't have time to do like a whole hour of just contour like every day um I do have a video hopefully it's up I need to get my computer problems figured out so bad But I, I shot a video of what I actually do every morning. And it's literally just me doing my makeup in the morning to go to work. So, it's literally, I mean, I think it literally is like 30 minutes. And it's just a basic neutral look that even if you're in a conservative office, Eh, depending on the office, they might think it's a little much, but depending on the office, it's just a nice, basic, neutral, professional um, look. Okay, so I put all that on, and so you can see, like, it's not... I'm going to go back with my beauty blender, make sure, and I'm just going to kind of tap this out. And make sure it gets all blended. The key to makeup is blending. You don't want any harsh lines unless it's a wing or you're doing like a look, you know? Okay. Uh, which, going in my makeup fail playlist. I'm going to start doing that. This is a makeup fail playlist. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, it like took the color. It like peeled it off. I do not like this sponge. I do not. It peeled all of the foundation off. And so now, okay. I'm not touching it. Now I'm having to go back and use like d double the product I normally would. Because what happened was this wasn't even. I ha I liked this side, but this side is was a little low. So I tried to like even it out, and it just one pat too many. It like peeled off like everything, and it was just my bare skin again. Which it it's fine. I like my skin. To be perfectly honest, I don't have a problem like not wearing, like I'll go out without makeup a lot. Um, but when you put foundation on and then you have a patch of like actual skin, it doesn't look good. Because the whole goal is for the foundation to look like it's that's your skin, right? And that, that's why I like this one. It just looks like your skin, but how it is after you do like a filter. <laughs> So, but when you have actual skin and then the foundation, it's just, it's, it's going to look weird. Okay. Anyways, so because I did and I tap, I did that when it's supposed to double as a highlighter. When I don't wear makeup, but I put a little bit of blush on, that's all I do. But because I went back with this and kind of tapped it out, I'm going to go ahead and do some more highlighting. I only highlight, the highlight and contour depends on your face and you have to play around with it. So I only highlight because th these are my cheekbones. Um, so I only really highlight here. And also I don't like, a ton unless I'm going out for an event, you know, which who's having those <laughs> in 2020. Okay, so it did a little bit of highlighter. You can see it's very subtle. Um, and this, the one I'm using currently is the Laura Geller High Def Duo. And I use, it's Heart of Gold. I use the Sparkle is what I just used. And um, I got that in my February BoxyCharm. So now I'm gonna go back with the bronzer and just kind of hit the high areas. That way I have more of a sun-kissed look. It's very subtle. 
Um, and I don't even know with this lighting if you can really see it, but it's very subtle. And then I've noticed, because I don't have, can't afford Botox right now, just tapping out, just tapping out to make sure the foundation doesn't crinkle before I get the setting spray on. Okay, so, uh, last couple steps, we're almost done. I always say that and then it's like another 15 minutes. Um, okay, so the last couple steps, I am going to take my eye highlighter again. I actually, I like it. It's a little darker than the Thrive one I have, but I like it. Um, and I'm just gonna go in and kind of tap in. And then I'm gonna put it here as well. So I did it corners and then I'm doing it on the brow bone or on the brow above and below. And it just kind of pops it. So you'll see a lot of the, now because this one's a little darker, I'm kind of just like blending in more than I would normally but yeah yeah so this I know a lot of girls they put the foundation and do a really you know that way the underside is really defined I don't really do that um but that's what that does is highlight the brows and kind of make them pop so this is the same ish thing but it's not as like intense you know and then Last thing I do before I put on lashes is I brush this out. I say this, my eyebrows. <laughs> brush the eyebrows out, get any of the makeup that's in there out, any of the dead skin cells, which is always gross to talk about, but get that out. And then, oh, there it is. Um, Clear mascara from e.l.f. Love. And I say every video, I don't do brows. I don't, don't come. My whole thing with these videos is my generation, a millennial, grew up with going to Target and getting CoverGirl, the basic CoverGirl stuff that like everybody has. We all have the same stuff. We all did horrible eyeliner and blue eyeshadow and like craziness and YouTube wasn't even really a thing yet. And it was pre all the YouTube beauty gurus, right? So a lot of my friends are like, I don't even know these kids, like how they're doing all this, where they're learning it. I'm like, YouTube, I'm like what? And it's like, yeah, they learn on YouTube. So my whole goal is if you're not good at makeup, this is how you do basic stuff. So I did like a fancy eye today and you can see I messed it up and had to do a different look um but yeah that's my whole goal is to like do looks that are accessible to people that aren't really good at makeup you know and how to get the basics so you get better that way it's like you know I know a lot of friends are like the contours just seem so intimidating I'm like it's three things jaw cheek this area that's all you need I was like, if you hate your nose and you want to try to like figure out how to do that, that's fine. I've never contoured my nose and I probably never will. Um, just because I don't, especially now in COVID with a mask and stuff, but also it's just like, I have allergies. I've rubbed my nose. Can you imagine like having a contour and then you have to blow your nose and it's just like, Ugh. so this is good, simple, everyday looks that you don't. I always hear about the Kardashians. Um, they're gorgeous. Their photos are gorgeous. And they're gorgeous without the makeup. But they wear, because they're being filmed, and they look great on film, but if you see them in person, they look crazy. A little crazy. And that's how I have, um, I'll pull it up. Um, this is from an event. I was the model, and it's called Product Runway. This is the event photo, like marketing photos they were doing for it. I got home. I look great in this photo. I looked insane in person. Here's the next year, the next year. I actually was dating a guy at the time. And after the photo shoot, I went over to his house and he was just like, but look at that photo. I look amazing. If I do say so myself, like, 
But the, my makeup was insane. It looked great on stage, it looked great in photos. My makeup was insane. So when I do my makeup, it is, it's supposed to be, I mean it to be accessible. I'm not trying to be a beauty influencer or anything. I just wanna make, I have a lot of friends who are like, how do you do it? And I'm like, the, it's so easy, it's not hard. I'm just trying to make it more accessible to people that don't really know what they're doing. And then who also don't wanna do those crazy, you know, phenomenal looks. But you know, it's like not everybody has the time or really wants to. These are just normal daily looks. So that's what I'm doing. I also talk about topics <laughs> that either annoy me or I think are important. Um, like my rant about that one pastor dude. Okay, so, oh wait, no, I was gonna try my new one. Forgot. Okay, I got this one. I'm, again, I stand the Urban Decay All Nighter, but I will try. Um, so it says Shake Well. Same instructions as every other one. Shake well, eight to 10 inches from your face. I always put on double the amount and says too. Okay, so ah, let's try it out. This is the Ma Maven Beauty Rose Water Setting Spray. I got it in my boxy charm. I'm trying it out. There we go. It smells really good. It smells really, it smells like roses. <laughs> okay, so did all that. Oh, sorry, Coco. I'm sorry, Coco. Okay, gotta get my lashes out. Um, okay, so the last step that I do is lashes. And I kind of have a weird way of doing them. Um, these are, I know I'm using this case but oh, got a text message. Um, I shoot this on my phone, so sometimes I get text messages. Um, I'm using this case, the Baddington lashes. I'm literally just using the case. These are not Baddington lashes. These are from Amazon, <laughs> and I think they were five, ten for five. So, but they actually they look good though. They're good quality. Okay. So to put on my lashes, what I do is I, um, I really need to clean this. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Eh, it's going in my makeup fail playlist. Anyways, so I curl the lash, right? Curl the lash. Um, and then I put the lashes on and I, so if you take care of your lashes, even the cheap Amazon ones, you can reuse, right? So good hygiene is important, cleaning your brushes, but if you take your lashes off and then you um, kind of wipe them, get all that gunk off, and then put, put them up in a case, you can reuse them like a couple different times. Um, and I say that as someone who's just doing their makeup kind of whenever I feel like looking pretty. So I'm not wearing these lashes hardly, like a long time. I'm wearing them like a couple hours at a time. So that's why I'm reusing them. If I was doing like, you know, putting these on at 6 a.m. and taking them off at 9 p.m., I probably wouldn't reuse them just because they've been on my eyes a long time. But blow on it, let it dry. I still have the lip to do. This is gonna be such a long video. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I got on a rant. We got a rant, and then my makeup. I don't think this is. There we go. Eh, this will work. Okay. And then you just put them on. Try to get them. The set I got on Amazon came with the the good, I just kind of plop them on actually, but it came with the applicator tweezer thing. So I kind of use the ends of it to stick. I 
Okay. Okay. So it's on. We're going to let that kind of dry. Hi, Coco. Come here. Coco's still in your mouth. Ah, oh, dang it. Talk about... Oh, dang it. Okay. Oh, no, you're on. Okay. Oh, just the end isn't. Shit. Okay. Oh! Okay. Yitch. Yes. Keep it going. Okay. Oh, there's a piece of fuzz. Gross. Okay. Then we'll do this one. Okay. After the setting spray is kind of dried, it looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks a lot better. I always put like double the amount of setting spray because if you, even if you have like a splotch, like I have that splotchy, it looks a lot better um, after you put the setting spray. It's just, I don't know, it just kind of fixes things, I feel like, so. So why I do this, if you're not accustomed to lashes, is you want, you don't put the glue on and then stick straight on. It's not gonna stick. You're gonna be fiddle with it. So you want it to get tacky. You wanna make sure you get the ends and that way you can just kind of plop them on is the goal. Like if you've ever been friends with a girl that was on drill team and watch her do her lashes, those girls, are bad asses. I, the chick that helped me do, um, get dressed for this event, she was on drill team. And she, I was like, I didn't really wear lashes at the time. And so she was like, okay, close your eyes. And like, she just plopped them on and they were perfect. And I was like, what? And she goes, what? I did drill team for four years. And I was like, she goes, yeah, imagine trying to put a lash on on a bus on the highway. I was like, oh, okay. Makes sense, girl. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So then I'm just going to kind of, I plopped it on and now I'm just kind of pushing it into place. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. So they're on. Right, and so it's like, oh, okay, they're on. There's a few last little steps that I like to do. I don't like these harsh lines. I don't like those. So what I do is I take my angled brush and then the same kind of dark shadow that I did whatever my eyeliner was in, and I go in my little angle baby brush and I kind of just soften that edge out so yeah you can see that's a lot better so do that on both sides definitely in my makeup fail playlist See if we can. Nope. Okay. I've made it much worse. Okay. It's just makeup that wipes off, right? And then I'm just gonna tap that back in with my finger. Oh.
came out looking good. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm definitely putting this in the fail playlist because that was a struggle to get here. Um, okay. What is my last step? I did. Oh, mascara. Yes. Okay. So because I didn't put mascara, I don't put mascara on. I curl, lash, and then I do mascara. Because anytime I've done it, curl, mascara, and then lash, I, the lashes don't stick well. But also, this is a great way to get them to look a little more natural because you can kind of see it's my natural lash and then the fake eyelash. So this kind of gets them, if you just a couple swipes, get them to blend together, basically. So we're gonna do that. And be gentle, you don't want to pull the eyelash off. Okay. And then same thing on this side. And see, it just kind of makes them look cohesive as one. Okay. Last thing, gosh, this video is going to be so long. Okay, last thing is lips. So for the, wait, hold on. Let me just, there we go. Okay, I am using the Too Faced Melted Matte which is one of my, I, I like that one. Um, as far as like matte lipsticks go, for sure. I have like several shades of them. I'm just, with the pandemic, I've used a lot of them because they're really great under masks. They don't move. Um, and then I'm using Nasty Girl, which I hate the name of, but whatever. Ooh. Ooh. Smells like buttercream. Okay. So I had put the foundation on. So red lips, especially matte, I don't put a gloss on prior. If I do a pink lip, I'll do like a, a balm and then I'll put the pink over it. But because this is a red, I put foundation and then I'm putting this straight on. No lip balm to start. Um, and my lips are pretty, they're okay. They're a little chopped. For me, they're okay. I typically have a very chopped lip. Um, okay, which is why I wear lipstick, because it ch tries to help. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get in my mirror, because I can't do it in my phone. Eh, maybe I could, no, it's weird. What if I just stopped here? <laughs> Perfect, just kidding. Could you imagine? Oh, yes, okay. It takes a bit for sure, it's red. Ooh, look how white my teeth look. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Gotta con I gotta concentrate. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm really trying, y'all. It takes a bit. I was at lunch with a woman one time.
and I kid you not when I say after that she was wearing bright orange red lipstick and after the meal she took out this lipstick just put it on and it was perfect per no mirror no mirror took it out put it on like chapstick perfect application that's how you know she's badass I just like stared in shock. I was like, how did you do that? She's like, oh, I've been doing it for years. I was like, all right. Okay, so, um, I'm picky about getting the mattes perfect because once it's there, it's there, right? So if it's a glossy or whatever, it kind of, But like with the red, once it's on, it's on, especially with the matte. So I just try to get it looking good. Um, I should have lined my lips actually. Yeah, that would have been better. I should have lined my lips, but it's okay. Yeah, should definitely should have lined them. And that's it, y'all. Wear as much makeup as you want. Do what you want. There's no wrong way to be a woman or a person in general. So, love y'all.